Miracy. There was once a king who often sailed up and down the Nile. One day, while returning to port, he saw a fisherwoman knee-deep in the water, casting out her nets. She was not the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen, but something about her struck him. Later, the king could not get the woman out of his mind. He sent his advisor to find out whether she was single, married, or widowed. The advisor returned, saying, The woman is married to a fisherman, and though he is poor, he is thought well of by his neighbors. What a shame, said the king. The advisor said, Don't be discouraged. You are the king and can have whatever or whomever you want. If your conscience allows, there are ways to get rid of the husband. The two put their heads together and devised a plan. Hi, I'm Lisa Bloom, the story coach, and you're listening to Once Upon a Business. In each episode, we explore a story, a fairy tale, folk tale, or traditional story, so that we can discover the amazing lessons relevant for business and for entrepreneurs. The next day, the king sent for the woman's husband. Fisherman, he said, I shall ask something of you, and if you don't succeed, I'll have your head chopped off. You must come before me tomorrow, riding and walking. At the same time, asked the fisherman, Yes, at the same time, snapped the king. The fisherman went home and told his wife the whole puzzling story. It's truly a paradox, said the husband. How can I ride and walk at the same time? Don't worry, said the wife. She went off to take counsel with her sister. Borrow my she-goat, said the sister. Tell your husband to go to the palace with his backside planted on the she-goat's back and his feet dragging on the ground. When the king saw the man coming to court, both walking and riding, he knew he'd been outsmarted. Well, fisherman, he said, I'm going to require another task. Tomorrow, you must appear before me dressed naked. The distraught fisherman went home and told his wife that being dressed naked was a great paradox, truly impossible. Don't worry, said the wife, and she went to take counsel from her sister. The sister said, Tell your husband in the morning, instead of putting on clothes, he must drape a fishing net over his shoulders. This is exactly what the fisherman did. When the king saw the fisherman dressed naked, he realized the fisherman understood paradox and that the third and final task must be truly impossible. Fisherman, he said, I want you to bring to the court an infant who tells riddles and tall tales. If you fail, I'll have your head. The fisherman went home in great distress and said to his wife, Now I'm done for. Where on earth is there an infant who can tell riddles and tall tales? I don't know, said the wife, but I shall ask my sister. After hearing the third task, the sister said, There is but one class of infant who can tell tall tales and riddles, and that is one who is half jinn and half human. There just happens to be such an infant in a nearby town. So the next morning, the fisherman went before the king, holding the seven-day-old infant in his arms. You expect this one to tell riddles and tall tales, bellowed the king. The fisherman said nothing, but the infant called out, Peace be on you, O great king. The king was taken aback, and the infant began his tall tale. I am a well-to-do fellow, and here's how I got my wealth. Fifty years ago, I was poor and hungry. I stood beneath a date palm heavily laden with fruit. I tossed clods of dried earth trying to knock the dates down, but the dates held fast. Those dates were sticky as dates will be, and the dirt held fast to the dates until there was nearly an acre of land up there in the tree. There was nothing the king loved more than a tall tale. That's very reasonable, he said. Go on with the tale, little teller. So, said the infant, I got a plough and an ox and a handful of sesame seeds. I climbed the tree and ploughed and planted and the rains came and the crops grew and made me a wealthy man. I bought lands and have prospered ever since. Only there is one thing bothering me. What's that? asked the king. Since that first harvest, there's been one sesame seed stuck in the bark of that date palm tree. I've been obsessed with it for 50 years. No matter how hard I poke and prod, I can't get hold of it. So, great king, here's the riddle. Should I forget about it and move on? 
The king was so delighted by the infant teller of riddles and tall tales that he cried, Of course, clever one, you're a rich man. You'll never want for sesame seed. Forget about it. The infant replied, You seem to be a wise king, so why not follow your own advice? My own advice, puzzled the king. Yes, cried the infant. Your life is full of ease and pleasure. You have dozens of women showering you with affection, so forget about the one you cannot have. Let it go. This was a king who had planned that morning to behead someone, but the infant's words went into his ears, down through his heart and into his belly. All the way through him, these words rang true. A smile came to his lips and he said, so be it. Go forth, good fisherman, and may God bless you and your wife. This story is from the book The Moon and the Well by kind permission of Erica Helm Mead. One of the reasons that I love this story so much is that it's convoluting. It takes us on a complex and fascinating journey that offers surprises all along the way, like a good story should be. And there are interesting characters in the story and complex emotions. It's part of why the story is so resonant. It really makes us feel. At first, we meet the king who is struck by this simple woman, the story tells us, not the most beautiful woman he's ever known, and yet she gets stuck in his mind. So the king and his advisor concoct a plan that is in essence a cruel game, an amusement really for them, and yet life-threatening and frightening for the poor fisherman. And the simple fisherman, though scared and overwhelmed, asks for help, and along with his wife they outsmart the king again and again. They don't give in to the powers that could so easily determine their fate. They choose to be resilient and find a solution time and time again. This so reminds me of the entrepreneurial journey. We're faced with challenges that feel overwhelming and beyond what we're capable of resolving. And yet with advice, with thoughtfulness and with collaboration, we can find solutions. It's such an important lesson. There will always be powerful elements that could determine our fate, market trends, algorithms, a global pandemic, so many events beyond our control that could be catastrophic. And yet there are so many stories of business owners that rise above these challenges and thrive. It speaks to the importance of getting help, whether it's your coach, your mentor, an advisor, or your wife's sister. You need to reach out and get input into your challenge so you can move forward. If the fisherman was stubborn or prideful and determined to carry this burden alone, well, he would have lost his head. Every successful entrepreneur has known how to ask for help. There was a time when I was struggling. What I'd been doing in my business before was not working now. I realized that I was paying my assistant more than I could afford to pay myself. And it was really frightening. I had a lot of financial obligations and I was just not meeting them. I remember going for a walk on the beach. It's a place that always soothes me. It clears my head and helps me work things out. I knew I needed help. And over that 45-minute walk with the waves gently lapping in and seagulls flying overhead, I made a list of the people I needed to speak to who could make suggestions, give me guidance, and ultimately get me back on track. There's an interesting question I've been asking my students and myself for years about this story. Who is the protagonist of the story? Who's the story really about? There are several ways of looking at this and most stories. Perhaps the story is about the fisherman who manages to keep his head, literally, and solve paradox after paradox with the help of his wife. Or perhaps it's a story about the wife, a woman who knows how to stand by and help her husband, who is smart and clear-headed, someone who can be relied upon no matter what the situation and who knows how incredibly smart her sister is. <laughs> or maybe the story is about the king, who teaches us about the danger of greed and envy, how it can be a kind of madness that will lead us down a dark path. How often have you followed a competitor with a less than positive emotion in your heart, where you've craved or even resented their success? It is a dark place. And yet the king ultimately realizes the error of his ways and stops the heartless game and leaves the fisherman and his wife alone. It's a strong warning that we should not take these emotions lightly. Yes, we all feel them. They're a reality. 
There's no denying it, but we should not give in to them or allow them to lead the way. I love that wisdom is, yet again, as in so many of these stories, found in the most unexpected of places. It's found in the words of the wife and her sister, the wise woman. It's found in the behavior of the jinn baby, and it's even in the simple sesame seed. It's a powerful reminder to take note of the hidden, quiet places where we can find the very best guidance. Sometimes it's understated, sometimes underrepresented, but it's that perspective and approach that may be exactly what we need. I'm Lisa Bloom, and you've been listening to Once Upon a Business. You can find out more about me at story-coach.com. That's story-coach.com. Once Upon a Business is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Just Between Coaches and Course Lab. This episode of Once Upon a Business was produced by Cynthia Lam. Jeff Govertson assembled the episode. Danny Inney is our executive producer. Post-production was by Post Office Sound. So you don't miss the episodes that are coming up on Once Upon a Business. Please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It really does help us out. Thank you. We'll see you next time.